Hello everybody, this is Joshua Hayes of Big Wave Trading coming to you with the January 12th stock market wrap up for you to use for your January 13th session. Let me also let you know that even if you don't see these videos in time, because sometimes the chat room is way too busy, my priority is with the Platinum members first, then it's with everything else. If you feel like that these videos are too late, you are wrong. Obviously, anybody that's watched any of my videos, you can randomly select any video you want from 2008 after June or May, I guess, actually after May, and you'll see that we're basically saying the same thing over and over and over, that the right side is the bear side. And that continues. So let's go ahead and start off with our analysis today. The S&P 500 was on its last bastion of holding on to an upturn, up for an uptrend with today's rollover I would on higher volume I would say that the uptrend is officially dead I do not know if IBD has marked it as a market in a correction I know I would technically we're still above the November lows so the rally attempt is still good however we've gone from 13 longs to 8 longs in 2 days 2 were full sales on Friday and we had three full sells today. That's just how it goes in a bear market. You can attempt to go long stocks, but whenever you're proven wrong, it's time to go. And that means whenever stocks set up, break out, work, then fail, you don't wait for them to bounce back. Stocks are either supposed to work when you go long or you get out. I saw the most ridiculous thing today. I decided to turn on Mad Money and watch James Kramer today. And I saw the most psychotic segment on technical analysis I've ever seen. Not only was there no volume used, but there was no pretense to the previous sell-off that he used in pot. So if you're getting your technical analysis advice from a guy that was down 40% last year, you know what? What do you expect? Next time, take your advice from a guy that was up 10% in all of his accounts next year or more. I'm sure there were people that did even better than me. But the fact that only two of my five accounts were down last year, and the worst one was down right around 14%, I would say that that makes me right around 26% more right than Kramer on my worst portfolio and well over 50% more right than he is in the stock market. And the stock that he used today is a stock that we're short right now for 54% gain in the past three months. And that's what I'm trying to say, folks. The big money is being made on the short side, not buying on the way down. You bought pot on the way down, you're basically on your butt now. But if you went short whenever it broke down originally, you're doing quite well. And that's why I continue to say, as long as the price index, the price of any index is below the 50 and 200 day moving average, not just above one, or not just above the other, but as long as it's below both of these averages and continues to be like this, there's only one right side to play is the short side. Now, now that we see the SP 500 with its higher volume, I'm just gonna go straight down the list. Next is the Dow Jones Industrial Average on this list. You can see, not only is it broken down below the 50-day moving average, volume is also higher, but BOP is actually going red. That's not good. I mean, this can't be good. And a lot of people are like, well, the volume's on low volume. So that means that whenever we start to rally again, it will be you know on higher volume, it'll be good. Don't count on that. Study 2002, everybody. I was there. I remember it clearly. We sold off the entire year on low volume. The entire year almost. Completely low volume. And then we had good support in 2002 lows. But more importantly, not only did we find good support of the 2002 lows when we brought in higher volume, we had stocks setting up in max green bop, flat bases, base on base, cup with handles, and the Chinese internet ISP stocks, Garmin, SSYS. There were other stocks, many others, ERES, JCOM, UNTD, uh, that I remember off the top of my head, that were setting up in beautiful bases and breaking out. That's not happening. We had our best setup in a stock that if it would have had its over-the-counter bulletin board price and volume with it would have shown us that the 200-day moving average is above the 50-day moving average. So technically our best setup was an incorrect setup as it was not a new issue. You should all, the subscribers should be familiar with this stock. It broke out the very next day, worked immediately up 7%. Now it's rolled over. Today it's still up another 14%. That means my very first buy, the stock's got to go. So I'm just getting completely out now so I can take at least a little bit of gain in what I had left in my first buy. Second buy was the near perfect setup and it failed. And that was our best setup. So that's what this market is. This market is a big lesson in learning to stay short 
in a bear market and not to take your not to take your shorts completely off the table until you have that full cover signal. Like I said, I've had two shorts give me the full cover signal, and I'll show them to you both. This one in December gave me the full cover signal around December 17th. And as you can see now, it completely looks like a bad cover. But it was, you got to listen to the signals. Even if it doesn't work, you got to listen to them. And the other one was CAG that we had as a short. Took our gains, got our full cover here. That's it, nothing you can do. That's it. So we just went ahead and got out. It's going to probably prove to be a mistake also. I'm sure CAG will go a lot, lo a lot lower. So, bottom line, market's not looking good still. So, I don't know why everybody's getting bullish, why everybody's telling everybody to, to average down, especially because the same people that are telling you to average down now were telling you to average down in January of 2008. They told you to average down, down in September of 2008. Why are we watching and listening the same people that made you all broke? I'm just so confused. I don't understand why we can't take the company away from the stock. The stock is not the company. The stock is controlled by a bunch of humans that have irrational motions like greed, fear, hope. And these people make decisions based on the future. The smart money's volume you can watch. You can watch where they go. And clearly, it's just crazy that Kramer could be Potts the most bullish chart out there because well, it doesn't matter. I can show you all this because I already got the huge gain. So we go short pot here in September it's in a clear downtrend gets by the 50 day moving average look at volume the entire rally had he would have put up the volume he could have showed you on a weekly that volume was huge much bigger on the downtrend that we've recently had compared to the uptrend that followed even the uptrend that previously followed this downtrend comes on overall lower volume. This can be seen easier in a monthly chart. Compare one, two, three, four, these five big tall red bars to the one, two, three, four, five, six previous big green bars. It's obvious the stock's under huge distribution. And if anybody would actually know how to read a chart on Kramer's show, Maybe he would know that after a stock has had a huge run-up and split two times that you don't buy the stock on the way down. Pot will probably see 50 before it sees 100. And even if it does see 100, the chances of it ever getting to its old high again is virtually impossible. Once the stock has had a huge run, that's normally it. And for me, the huge run came from there to there. And in two years, the 380% gain is in. And if we want to go back all the way to 2003 to the high, we can see that it's 1,600% runs in. Potash is clearly a short sale, and I think it's insane that Kramer was telling you that TNH or pot was bottom. And if it goes to a new low, the technicians are wrong. How can the technicians be wrong when the technicians have been shorting the stock ever since its break from August and September after it can ride after it rode the 50 and 200 day moving average higher from 2006 to the 2008 top? Complete idiocy, complete just insanity, and it's one of the main reasons that Real Money let me go. I was completely – if you go and re read my old – Real money columns in January, you'll see I was telling you to go short the market. You can see that I played the little uptrend, and you can see all of the longs Kramer took that I immediately told you you should not take. Had you listened to me and not Kramer, you would have saved yourself a ton of money. But instead, he's got you averaging down. He's got you believing that's in the right way to invest. Well, it's not. It's the wrong way to invest. The right way to invest would be to have bought the dollar on the bounce off the 200-day moving average. As you can see by doing that, it's now up 4%. Everybody says the dollar's crashing, but the last time I checked, coming off the June-July lows, and ever since it really took out the 50-day moving average in July – right here with this open and high day close, the United States dollar is still up 13% while everybody's telling me that the United States dollar is crumbling. So it pays to really pay attention to what the market's actually really doing and not just the opinions of people that are involved in the market. The VIX is ticking back higher, showing that emotions are getting extreme again. Not nearly as extreme as it was. But here's the NASDAQ to also show you it's broken down below the 50. Volume is below the 50-day moving average and lower. But I want to remind you, low volume sell-offs can keep on keeping on. The Russell 2000 down 2.6 per se. The SP 600 down 2.5 percent. Look at oil down 7 percent. Ouch. Look at silver down 5 percent. Ouch. 
Look at platinum down 3%. Ouch, still within the uptrend, still has a little bullish tail. And to look at silver, we have the same thing. And then we look at gold, though. Starting to look like it's breaking down. Has a more of its upper range in its intraday pattern than where it closed. Closed near the lows, down 4%. Looks to me like it's kind of breaking down. If it rolls back over under the 50-day moving average, that's not going to be good for all the gold, silver, and platinum bulls. This is why I've been waiting to go long, and I'm still not long yet. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. There's only one thing that I showed you that's bullish. That's the dollar. The gold, silver, and platinum long that we were talking about, that's off. We're not going to be going long because they broke. Until they set up again, until something sells up, sets up, we're not going to be going long. This is Josh Hayes of BigWaveTrain.com. Part 2 and Part 3 are following. Aloha.